Greetings and salutations and thank you for clicking on the video. This video is to help you protect yourself from the evil dirty cow Linux bug, which ZDNet calls a silly name for a serious problem. This is a vulnerability that people are actually exploiting at this point. This is not a theoretical vulnerability. We hear about those all the time in the tech press and they make a big deal out of them and they say, well, somebody could use this to exploit a system. This is one that people are actually actively using right now. Now, the good news is it is not necessarily targeted at people who are running Linux desktops. It is more for folks who are running web servers. However, it is always better to be safe than sorry. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can protect yourself from dirty cow if you are running any Ubuntu flavor that is currently supported. So the mechanisms of how Dirty Cow works are a little bit above my pay grade. It's not something that I can easily explain, but it is a way that an attacker can get into a system and they can get root privileges, which means that they can do anything on the system. They can look at any data that's stored on the system and they can do a lot of damage. Giving an attacker root privileges is never a good idea, right? So this is a kernel level bug, but, uh, like I said, they're going after web servers right now, not Linux desktop users, but we'll show you the patch anyway. And as usual, which is actually a good thing, by the time you hear about a vulnerability, the patch is already out. So when if you're watching this video, you can fix this and not worry about it. And you can always come here to ZDNet or anywhere else and you can read more about it. So let's just get into patching the problem and talking about what you need to do. If you are running Ubuntu, and in this video we will be talking about Ubuntu and Ubuntu flavors that are currently supported, you will need to make sure that you are needing, needing to run one or the other of these two kernels because they have the patch. So if you are running Ubuntu 14.04, the one that you need is 313.0-100. And if you are running Ubuntu 14.04 or 16.04, you could elect to upgrade your kernel to 4.4.0-45. So I have uh, this terminal here is showing two machines that are currently running those kernels because all of the machines in my house have been upgraded and are very happy. Now, why would you choose one kernel over another? If you have hardware that doesn't work very well with the 4.4 kernel like I do, then your only choice is to roll back to the 313 kernel. It's very confusing the way Ubuntu handles their kernels. So if you're running 1404, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to look for information on how that you can change the hive. Okay. They have several different supported hives for Ubuntu. So if you installed 1404, before they started doing revisions, then you got the 313 series of kernels. They should be updated automatically, not a problem. However, if you installed any of the other images, I believe that they had 319 as a kernel at one point, and I do know that 4.2 was a kernel for Ubuntu 1404. Uh, there, none of those are supported right now, so you'll have to go back to 313, or you'll have to go forward to 4.4-45 uh, there. So. 4.4-45 uh, will probably be the one that is the most useful to most of the viewers. However, like I said, you may have a reason to want to actually roll back to 3.13. There's a catch when rolling back to a kernel. So let's do a for instance here. We have a Linux Mint machine. And if I query it to find out what the running kernel is, it says that it is 3.19-32 generic. So if you're running... Linux Mint 17.3, this is the kernel that you're going to see as the standard recommended kernel. Well, this kernel has that bug in it. We got to fix that. So the way to do that is we're going to open up Mint Update. I don't have Mint Update set to start with my Mint machines because I do it by hand. Most folks who run Linux Mint will have it start by hand, or rather start automatically when the machine boots up. And we're going to go into the update manager here and let that get itself together. We're going to go to view and then we're going to go to Linux kernels. And 
in this particular tool here, you can go through and choose the kernel that you'd like to use, okay? So you'll see that uh, 313.100 has already been installed on this machine. Let's assume that that's the kernel that you need. So that's right here. That's installed, but it is not the running kernel. So if we sort them by loaded kernels, you'll see that we have 319. Okay, if we had chosen to install the, something from the 4.4 series, which should actually be at the very bottom of this list, then this wouldn't be an issue. The machine wouldn't be running on 319. You would install the new kernel and restart it, and then it would take the kernel with the higher release number because that's how this is programmed to work. But if you have to roll back, then you're going to have to do that manually, and I'm going to show you how to do that. It's actually not really hard at all. So the running kernel has 319. We've got the 313-100 kernel installed. We're just not running on it right now. How do we do that? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to restart the machine. Restart. And then as soon as you see your BIOS screen go by, right there, hold Shift. So I'm holding down the Shift key, and that gets me to the Grub menu. And we want Advanced Options. And we want to load off of 313 Generic. Don't go down in here to Recovery Mode or any of that. Just look for the kernel that you want to run. In this case, it would be 313. And then Enter. And now the machine is going to boot Linux Mint off of the 313 kernel. That is a, a very good skill to have if you run any Ubuntu-based Linux because they all work that way. So if you do get a kernel update and you find out that the system's not working very well, then you can always roll back to another kernel and then you can remove the new kernel that was giving you heartburn. Okay, so now if I do you name R, you see that we're on the kernel that we need to be on. So what we've got to do now is uninstall that kernel that is 319. So just open up Update Manager. And now that we have that open, it takes a couple of seconds to get itself together. We go to Kernels. Sort it by Installed. You notice now that we are running off the proper kernel. So we go to Installed. There's the 319 kernel. Choose to remove that kernel. Yes, we are sure we want to do that. Give it your password. And it's going to remove that kernel from the system. So the next time it boots, it's not going to see a kernel above 313, the release number. So it will not select that. And now you will be on actually the latest kernel from Ubuntu if you have to use something from the 313 series instead of 4.4, uh, then you can do that. So there you go. I hope that was not too confusing, gang. I know that this, <laughs> the way Ubuntu handles kernels is a head scratcher. And if you need to do this for Ubuntu 14.04 directly, uh, then I would suggest that you seek other information about installing the proper hive because you can actually install a one-off kernel into your system and then not get updates. You really want to put the right package in because that way you're going to get continuous updates whichever series of kernels that you choose. And before we wrap this video up, I know most of you are going to want to uh, roll on and do other things. A couple of things I want to talk about. Just give you guys an update, those of you who follow my channel closely. That's good to go right there. A uh, couple of things to talk about. First of all, um, I have all of my machines that are in the house here running on Linux Mint at this point. And so I have three computers and they are all running on Linux Mint 17.3. The other two machines are running on the latest four, four kernels, so that's how I was able to show that to you. And I did that just to make things consistent. I had come up, I was doing a lot of distro hopping over the summer and produced a lot of videos about it. I'm kind of over that phase right now and I'm just into wanting the machine to work when I sit down in front of it. And unfortunately, the machine that uh, was running Ubuntu Mate that C Cindy used all the time, my fiance, it developed a couple of issues and uh, it was the 
performance was really going crazy. There was something wrong way down in the system in that machine because every time you would click on something, the processor would go insane and the fans would spin up and I couldn't figure out exactly what was causing all of that. So instead of trying to troubleshoot the problem, I just went ahead and put Linux Mint on it, which allows me to do some pretty cool things like uh, I have this terminal here. I've got two machines here. I'll just show you real quick. So I'm going to use Terminator, which is the terminal, and I'm going to tell it that I want to have any command that I type appear on either machine. So now if I type in update, which is a script that I wrote to go out and refresh the apt update and then go ahead and install all the updates in just one shot. You can see it's asking for a password. And now it's going to go out. It's actually going to do that while I'm recording this video. Shouldn't be any updates because I just updated everything this morning. And so now I can have Terminator here with all of the computers hooked up, the, the remote machines through SSH. And I can just issue commands all at the same time. It's exactly the same operating system. So it makes it pretty cool. I can also do groovy things like X forwarding where I can open up an application from one machine and then it, since all of them are now running my theme and everything, it, it blends right in. It's just running on another machine, but I'm seeing it here. So a lot of cool things that you can do when you have all of the operating systems on one thing. And so that was a big project over the weekend. The other thing that I did was uh, partly because of Dirty Cow and partly because of some uh, stuff that I've been reading lately, I decided to go ahead and put firewalls on all these machines even though there is a firewall on the front end of the network for years and years I ran it without running firewalls on the machines that were inside the network but I got to thinking about that and I was actually working with a client and we were talking about it and I said you know you never know somebody might get into this network with some smart device and then that smart device might want to start island hopping and let's go you know kinda of smart to not allow it to do that so I have an exception for SSH, but other than that, anything trying to get into any one of these machines on the network, not going to happen. <laughs> nope. Nothing's going to get in here because all the ports are closed and nobody's listening and all the machines are set up the same way. So that's pretty cool. Now, the program that I'm using in Linux Mint 17.3 is GUFW, which works with IP tables. IP tables is a firewall that is built into every Linux distribution out there. It's already running in your kernel when you install it and you just have to go in and make it do your bidding because uh, when it comes up it's just letting everything through. That, those are the rules. So it's like it's not there at all. But if you get GUFW then you can graphically work with it. It's a great little, great little application. and. So there's the firewall. I think Linux Mint 18 ships the GUFW application by default. So yeah, it's something definitely to look into doing. Just remember that if you install a firewall, things like Samba and SSH are going to quit working. You're going to have to create exceptions under rules here. But I think they have every web application on the planet listed. So if I go in here like this, go to rules and tell it I want to add a rule uh, you just type in the application and it'll just pop up so watch we're not running Samba on this system but if I type in Samba there you go there's the exception and you can just add that and then you're done we're not gonna add anything because I don't run Samba but anyhow so thank you for watching the video be safe out there gang just practice common sense Linux is still probably the safest platform in the world to run your desktop on don't let all of the hysteria that goes on every time one of these bugs comes out get to you too bad because like I said by the time you hear about it it's most likely patched and in this situation that is definitely true so if you just go on and make sure that you're running either one of these particular kernels if you're running an Ubuntu flavored Linux then you're good to go and you don't have to worry about it because it's fixed in there so thank you for watching. We'll do it again soon. Check out Easy Linux on the web. Check out Easy Linux on Facebook. And also check out uh, Easy Linux. Uh, what was I going to say? Let's see. I said check out Easy Linux on the web. Check out Easy Linux on Facebook. 
And if you do check out Easy Linux on Facebook, make sure that you give it a like. That is most appreciated. Now, what else was I going to tell you about? I was going to tell you about FreedomPenguin.com, where you can find all kinds of really cool articles about Linux. And they, the links will be in the description to this video. And there you go. So thank you for watching. We'll do it again soon.